Isn't it frustrating when you see this tricky looking integral on your next exam and you don't know what to do and maybe you're worried about running out of time. But I'm about to show you in just a few minutes how simple this is to solve. When you see this problem before jumping into complicated methods, first look at if a u substitution here makes this simpler. Now taking the derivative of 3x plus 4 when I set it to this variable u will tell us that du will equal 3dx after we took the derivative of both sides. And this 3 here is simply a constant, right? So that means that the u substitution here will actually work. But we don't have a 3 in the original problem in front of dx. So we need to actually solve this for dx by dividing both sides by 3. And so in the new integral that's in terms of u, dx is going to be replaced with this one third du. Okay, but we're not done, right? Because this still looks like it's a tricky integral. And maybe you've memorized how to integrate sine to any power of n, but the goal of this video isn't to teach memorization, but to remember how to solve these problems on your next exam in case you forgot to memorize a formula. So what I want you to think about here is a really cool trick. When you see an odd power of sine like we do here with the power of five, you can do a really cool time-saving hack. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring this one-third out of the integral. And then to save yourself some time, remember that you can always break up a power into parts, right? Isn't sine to the fifth of u the same as sine of u times sine to the fourth of u? Now, by inspection, it looks like I just made this problem tougher because now I've got two sine terms. But the goal here is to try and transform the problem into something that will allow us to have an expression of both sine and cosine, where we could do another u substitution. And remember from your trigonometric identities, right? That sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals one. So what's really convenient here is that because sine to the fourth of u is a power of sine, that is a perfect square. If we write sine to the fourth of u, as sine squared of u all squared, this inner part now can be replaced with that trigonometric identity. So if sine squared of u plus cosine squared of u equals one, and you were to manipulate that equation to solve for sine squared of u, that means that we can replace sine squared of u with this one minus cosine squared of u. And check this out now. There is no rule that says you cannot do a u substitution more than once on an integral. And we're gonna do just that here because now that you've got this sine of u du all grouped together and the inner expression here has cosine in it, what we can do now is we can let that inner cosine of u be this new variable w. And then when I take the derivative of both sides, check this out dw now equals negative sine of u du. Now we do have to modify this equation a little bit because above we don't have sine of u du with a negative in front, right? But just like before in the first part of this video, I can multiply both sides by negative one to solve for sine of u du. And that means when we rewrite this expression in terms of w, I've introduced this negative one here. And that's not a problem, right? Because I can just bring that outside of the integral. And now check this out. By a binomial expansion, one minus w squared, all squared, expands to a expression that's gonna be one minus two w squared plus w to the fourth. And this is now a simple polynomial integration problem, right? And if you remember, when you have an expression like this where you're adding and subtracting terms, you can just break this up into several different separate integrals and each one's easy, right? So I'm gonna keep the negative one third factor out and now I'm gonna have the integral of the first part, which is this dw minus two, bringing that constant out where we now integrate w squared dw. And then finally, we're going to integrate w to the fourth dw. So if I were to expand on this further by solving those integrals, I'm not gonna show the plus c yet until the very end, but in the inner side of this, we're going to get this w minus two times in parentheses, one third w cubed plus one fifth w to the fifth. And then when I expand everything through by multiplying this negative one third term, I'm going to get this final expression in terms of w, but we're not done, right? Because the original problem was written in terms of x. But we do have to make one hop first before we get to x. Because remember, w substitution was not in terms of x. It was in terms of u. So we're going to go ahead and remember here that w was cosine of u based on our u substitution above. So I'm going to put that back in. And now finally, remember with our very first u substitution, u is equal to 3x plus 4. So that's going to be your final answer here.